Are you thinking about becoming an audiobook narrator? Or have you seen a lot of posts on social media about becoming an audiobook narrator? Well, we're going to dive into how to find your first book to audition for and how to record and submit that audition to see if this is something that you want to do. Stick around. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Angela. I'm a full-time voiceover artist and audiobook narrator, and my channel is dedicated to those of you just getting started out in this wonderful world of voiceover and audiobook narration. And what we're going to talk about today is the world of ACX, and we're going to talk about how to find the first book that you're going to uh, submit an audition for and how to submit that audition, how to record and submit it to ACX. So let's get started. Before we get started, I want to make sure that you understand that ACX is an arm of Amazon, and this is the site where authors and audiobook narrators come together, they find each other to create books for Audible. Now, ACX is not available in every country, so please check with ACX.com to see if it is available in your country before you get started. Now, we're going to start this video in a place where you've already created your profile. So now we're going to find a book for you to submit an audition for. The one thing that I definitely recommend that you do is when you're first starting out, you, you might see quite a few books available. You might not see a whole lot of books available. And usually what I find people are doing is that they are putting way too many filters on what it is that they are looking for, right? Over here on the right, we have filters. And these filters are for you to determine what kind of book that you want to search for. I recommend that you use these filters very sparingly because as you can see in project budget, we have unspecified per finished hour, which means that the author is not quite sure what kind of rate they want to pay for this audiobook. Now, if you use too many of these filters, you might inadvertently narrow your search way down too far where you only have a few different books available to you. So I recommend that that you use these filters very sparingly because if you think about a first-time author, an indie author who is self-publishing, they may be unsure of what kind of tone they want. They're not sure what kind of rate they want to pay, whether they want to pay for production or PFH, which means per finished hour, or if they want to go the royalty share route or the royalty share plus option. They aren't quite sure, so they're looking for options. So use these filters sparingly because you don't want to severely limit the amount of books that you can audition for right out of the gate. I think at the very least, the only filters that you want to start with are the languages that you can proficiently speak, right? So for me, that would be English. I have a general American accent. And if you can sustain another accent very well for hours and hours and hours for an audiobook, then select those accents as well. And for the other filters, if you can sustain, and keep in mind, sustain is the key word. If you can maintain and sustain any kind of voice ages, then you can select those as well. Otherwise, just leave these filters blank. Vocal style, leave it blank, right? Okay, so now let's go over to the available books. Only selecting English language and American general accent. That's all I want to see right now. Now, it looks like there are 311 books that are available to submit auditions to. Now, keep in mind that, again, ACX is a global marketplace, right? It's available in many countries, not all countries, but many countries. And there are books and authors, or authors, really. There are authors submitting their books for audition all throughout the day, every day. So I highly recommend checking in with ACX often, periodically throughout the day, and you'll see these numbers change because there are books that are being 
awarded to a narrator, and then there are also new books being added all throughout the day, every day. Okay, so the very first book that I am seeing, this one here, looks like it fits me fairly well. Female English, American general accent, middle-aged, and warm. So the budget for this one is royalty share, meaning that you will share in the profits of every book sold, right? So royalty share and this project length is under three hours. So let's just go ahead. That means three finished hours, right? And we'll get into that in a minute. So let's go ahead and audition for this one. So once we get into the details of this book, it looks like it is under one hour long. So it looks like the word count of this book is 8,819 words, which is just under an hour. A finished hour for an audiobook is about 9,300 words. So every 9,300 words equates to one finished hour of an audiobook. But that is a finished hour, meaning that is all of the narrating, all of the editing, all of the mastering and formatting done to equate a finished hour of an audiobook. So in reality, a finished hour could take you three, five, eight, ten hours, depending on your skill level. And I want to tell you that in the beginning, it's going to take some time to get all of these down, to streamline your process. So your very first book may take a whole lot longer time-wise than, let's say, your 10th book or even your fifth book. And by your 100th book, it will take you maybe two hours to get a finished hour done. So keep that in mind. And because this is a royalty share book, meaning that you're going to share in the profits of each sale of this book, you want to make sure that you scroll down to the bottom and check out the Amazon ranking of the book that you are currently going to audition for. You want to see that it is selling well. You want to see that the author has perhaps a fan base. You can search this author on social medias. You can go and check out their website. You can reach out to them directly. It's okay to ask questions. You can ask about a marketing plan, how they plan on marketing this book. You yourself as the narrator can also market this book, which I highly recommend if you're choosing royalty share. You're both in it together as a team to make sure that this book sells well. So as we click on the title summary, the author is going to give you more information about what this book is about. And if it does resonate with you and you've reviewed all of the narrator requirements and it does fit you very well, and this is something that you're interested in, and I highly recommend, especially for your first book, that this is something that interests you. It has to interest you because that will come through in your narration. If you select a book that is something that is not interesting to you as at all, then that also is going to come through in your narration. So choose something for your very first book, especially something that is probably on the smaller side, three hours or less, and something that interests you. And if this is something that interests you, then let's audition for it. So we're going to click on audition. Now it looks like the author has an audition script uploaded. So let's download it. All right, here is our audition script. So I'm going to switch over to Adobe Audition, which is the DAW or digital audio workstation that I use. And we're going to create an audio file and start recording. Okay, so this is Adobe Audition. This is my digital audio workstation or DAW that I use. The first thing I'm going to do is open a brand new file. And I recommend that you name the file with your name in it. Because if the author is going to download all of these auditions to review, and perhaps they have a few places where they're soliciting auditions from, and then they're getting the opinions of other people, right? Do you like this one better? Do you like this one better? And they narrow it down to the top three narrators, perhaps, and then they choose one, and it's yours, and they don't have your name on it. They don't know... <laughs> they don't know who the narrator is to contact you. So be sure that you put your name in the audition file. For this video, I'm going to use voiceover Angela. And then you also want to put the title of the book. Now I'm going to save this file to my ACX folder on my desktop. And I highly recommend from the start to start using folders for all the different platforms, different folders for all of the platforms that you find work on just to keep things organized in that way that you can find your files later. So create a ACX folder 
on your desktop and save all of your auditions to it. Same with any other platform that you're working on. Now, we're going to start recording. I use the clicker method to mark my mistakes, but you can also use punch and roll, uh, which is another form of recording audio. Or if you don't have a dog training clicker, you can snap your fingers, cluck your tongue, clap to mark a mistake. And as you can see, it creates a sharp spike in the audio waveform, so you can clearly see where the mistakes are. So I'm going to stop talking, and we're going to get to the audition now. If you're anything like me, emotions can feel like waves crashing over you. Beautiful, powerful, but sometimes overwhelming. And when the tide rises, it helps to have tools at the ready, like a lifeboat for your soul. In this chapter, we're diving into practical, soulful ways to take care of yourself and create an emotional toolkit. I don't like the way I did that, so I'm going to mark the mistake and redo it. In this chapter, we're diving into practical, soulful ways to take care of yourself and create an emotional toolkit that works for you. These aren't just random tips. They're tried and true methods that help save me from spiraling into overwhelm more times than I can count. I don't like the way I did that either, so I'm going to redo it. <clears throat> These aren't just random tips. They're tried and true methods that helped. I said the word wrong, so I'm going to redo it again. These aren't just random tips. They're tried and true methods that have saved me from spiraling into overwhelm more times than I can count. Let's build your toolkit together. Your DIY Emotion Reset Box. Picture this, a treasure chest just for you filled with everything you need to ground yourself when the world feels too much. Here's what you'll include. Aromatherapy essentials. Grab a small bottle of lavender or eucalyptus oil. Just one sniff can remind your nervous system to chill. Music that speaks to your soul. Curate a playlist with songs that lift you up or calm you down. For me, it's a mix of soulful ballads and soft instrumentals. Textures that soothe. A soft blanket. A smooth worry stone. A smooth worry stone. Or even a squishy stress ball. Touch has a way of grounding us back into the present. Something symbolic. Add a small object that feels sacred to you, like a crystal a charm, or a handwritten note with your favorite affirmation. Whenever you feel stuck, open your box and let it guide you back to yourself. Okay, I recorded about... Let's stop the recording. I recorded about... Once I take out all of the talking and the retakes, it'll be about two and a half minutes long, perhaps. That is sufficient for an audition. Authors, you will find that authors will sometimes submit entire chapters for audition. You don't need to record the entire chapter. It's just because perhaps the author didn't know how to slice out a sufficient piece for an audition. Sometimes authors will submit the entire book. You don't have to read the entire book for the audition. However, it is good to review the material. That is an opportunity for you to review the material and make sure that you're comfortable with it, right? It could have some stuff in it that you're not comfortable with. That is a good opportunity to review the entire book before you submit the audition. In this case, the author submitted a larger chunk of the book to audition for, but really two to three minutes is sufficient for an audition. The author is going to know in the first few seconds if your voice is a fit or what they're looking for. So now what I'm going to do, before I do anything else, I'm going to save this file because just in case anything happens, I don't want to lose this. I don't want to have to go back in and re-record it. Now we're going to edit. So the first thing I'm going to do is apply my effects rack. And my effects rack is basically any kind of noise reducers, uh, equalizers, mouth declicks, deplosives, these are things that will enhance the sound of my voice. I do have other videos here on my channel where I go through a lot more of these things in detail, but we're just going through the audition process now. 
Okay, now that my rack is applied, I'm going to go through and remove any of the talking I did beforehand and remove any of the retakes. Okay, so I removed all of the talking beforehand. Now, what I'm going to do is find a nice, quiet piece of room tone, which is the space between your dialogue. I want about, if I'm looking at my duration here, let's make this a little bit bigger for you. I'm going to be looking for a duration of about 0.68 ish. That's good enough. Six point or point six seven five. Let's copy that. And we're going to use this to paste in later and I'll show you. So what I'm going to do at the very head of my file here is paste in that room tone that we just created because you want your audition to also be ACX compliant because authors won't tell you, but sometimes they will check to see if your auditions are ACX compliant. So I wanna make sure that this is. So the head of your file needs to be, the narration needs to start between a half a second and a second. So because the duration of that room tone we just copied was 0.68 or 0.675, that is directly between half a second and a second. So we are already ahead of the game here. Now you can't really see it, but there is a breath here. Now. I often hear from brand new audiobook narrators that breaths are a bad thing. They hear that breaths should be removed. Don't remove your breaths. Leave the breaths in. We're human telling a human story to other humans. Humans breathe. Leave the breaths in. If it is a large breath or you're clearing your throat or you're coughing, something like that, then remove that. But leave your breaths in. Normal conversational breaths. So this is where I made a mistake. So I marked it with a click with my dog training clicker. And that is the click there. It's clearly noticeable, right? So let's find where the mistake starts, which is there. So I'm just going to mark that for now with M on my keyboard. It creates a marker where I can clearly see where I am. And let's find where I restarted it. This is where I restarted it. So I'm going to select all of this mistake here up to my marker and just delete it. Okay, I'm just going to paste in my room tone here. This is the start of a new sentence. You don't have to always do this, but I just want it to be a clean start to the next sentence. So I'm pasting in over my breath. So here's another mistake. So I'm going to start at the start of this mistake and go to where I retook it. And then I cleared my throat here. Okay, so I must have made some noise here. So I'm just going to select all of this and paste in my room tone. Actually, I'm gonna give it two of these so we can separate it to a new section. Okay, just to shorten this up, I'm gonna paste in my room tone. Okay, this is a list of things that we needed for um, this DIY toolkit that she mentioned in her audition. So I'm just going to separate these with uh, two of these room tones just so they're separate. Okay, here's another listed thing. Okay, another mistake. So I'm gonna highlight and remove the mistake. And then here's another listed item. Okay, here's the end of the list of things. So I'm gonna separate that with two room tones. Okay, so here's where I started talking to you again. <clears throat> so I'm gonna remove that too, but I'm going to highlight all of this from the end of where I stopped my audition to where I was talking to you and then paste in. I'm going to paste in enough room tone so that the tail or the ending of the file equates to somewhere between a second and five seconds of room tone, because that is also a requirement for ACX. So looking at the duration down here, we can tell that this highlighted area is 2.850 seconds. So right in between one second and five seconds. So that is ACX compliant. Now we're going to save this again. Now what I'm going to do is now normalize this file to negative three, which in Adobe Audition is found in your favorites. And then we're going to now test it for correct peak amplitude and RMS. And you can do this in Adobe Audition by going to Amplitude Statistics. If you don't see this panel on your Adobe Audition, all you need to do is go to Window and checkmark it. It'll probably show up in a separate 
panel that you can then grab and drag wherever you want it. I've stuck it right here next to my effects rack because I use these two the most. So now we're going to scan it. The only numbers you're going to be looking at in this list of numbers when you scan your file in Amplitude Statistics is the peak amplitude, which needs to be at negative 3 or lower. So if it's negative 3.50, you're still fine. It's a, it's not, negative 3 is not the target. You just cannot exceed negative 3. So for example, if this file is negative 2 point anything, it's too high. If it's negative 3 point something, you're still fine. You don't have to make it exactly negative 3. It just cannot exceed negative 3. And remember, these are negative numbers, so it does get confusing. The only other number you're looking at in this list of numbers is the total RMS amplitude, which needs to be between negative 18 and negative 23. This file falls in at negative 20.27, which is perfectly in the middle of that standard. So we know that this file will pass ACX standard. The other thing you want to test is your noise floor. So go to a section of your file where there is no dialogue, select it, and play. Now looking at your volume level bar on Adobe Audition, this needs to fall no higher than negative 60, so it cannot go to the right of negative 60 at all. This file looks like it peaks right around negative 66, so our room floor is fine on this file. So my last step is now to save as. We're going to switch this format to MP3. We're going to change the sample type to 44100 and our bit depth to 16 bits and hit OK. If you want to test it in Amplitude Statistics one more time, I highly recommend that you do that, just because sometimes when changing sample rates and bit depths, it will change the formatting a little bit. So let's test it one more time just to be sure. And we're still within range. We're fine. So we're good. Now let's go back over to ACX. So back to the audition on ACX, there is a text box down here below where we upload the file that you can add in uh, a small note to the author or to the rights holder. And I always like to start with thanking them for their time and their consideration. Always be professional and polite. You always want to add any kind of, um, you know, you're very interested in this book. If it really resonates with you, if you can relate to it, if it's something that interests you, you want to add that to your message as well. And then also let them know that you are flexible, that if there is if they would like you to change up the, as I've noted in the, in the uh, note box here, if they would like the pitch, speed, or tone adjusted at all, that you're more than willing and able to do that for them. And then again, thank them for their time and sign your name. And then upload your file. And then click Submit Audition. And then after you've submitted your audition on ACX, it's really just rinse and repeat. It's just doing this same process over and over again for every book that you find interesting. And don't forget to also use these auditions as samples on ACX. 60% of the jobs booked on ACX come from auditions. The other 40% from samples. The thing to remember about posting samples on ACX is to be sure to name your sample appropriately. Don't name your sample My Audiobook Audition. That tells the searcher nothing about what they're looking for. And I know there's filters and things, but not everybody uses filters, wants to use filters, or maybe they just want to see what's out there. Every sample that you post on ACX is posted chronologically, meaning it's at the top of the list. So they're just going to go through and see what's in there, right, what's available. If they see a sample that's named My Audiobook Audition, that tells the searcher nothing, right? You want to make sure that you name it something like American Female Narrating Self-Help or Romance or Drama, something to that effect, descriptive. You want to describe what your sample is. You can also use the filters if you want to. And then once you have your samples posted, because they are posted chronologically, you want to choose an interval where you recycle these samples. 
right? So, for example, if you post a sample on Monday and you're at the top of the list, by Wednesday, you're probably at the bottom of the list. And then by Friday, you're on page two, three, four, or five. So you want to take them down and then repost them. And then also keep adding new samples. Refresh them often because we just inherently get better the more and more we do this, the more practice we get, the more we understand how our effects work and our we treat our space, right? Your samples are just going to sound better and better the more that you do this. So you want to refresh your samples often at whatever interval you choose, whether it's once a month, once a week, right? So just keep refreshing your samples often to get you noticed more often. That is all I have for you today. I hope this video helped. I do go live on YouTube every Tuesday at 12 p.m. EST, and we talk about topics like this and many other topics about voiceover and audiobook narration. Be sure to join us. Thank you so much. Please consider subscribing. Be sure to like this video. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you on the next time. Bye.